So in my book, Java for Testers, I encourage people to learn Java by exploring Java. And that's what we're going to do in this. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. I'm going to start with the ArrayList class. That's part of the Collections class. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new package in here to help me. Remember, I'm exploring, so I haven't necessarily planned this in advance. We're just going to see what happens. So I'm going to create a new Java class and we'll call it uh, list explored test because the array list implements the list interface. And really, when we are coding, we want to code to interfaces rather than concrete classes. I'll cover that in a different video later on. But when I am exploring, I don't create main methods and I don't create applications and projects. I create tests and then I explore through the test method. So let's start with test method. And I'm just going to, I don't exactly know what I'm going to do yet. So I'll call it public void can explore. I'll call it a realist. Even though I'm going to be exploring the list class, let's start with a realist because what I see online is most people um, will start with an realist. Remember, ArrayList, you can see here from the screen, that E means it's generic, so I have to tell it what, with it, what I'm putting in this list. I'll start with strings. I'll call it strings. Then it doesn't know what that is, so I'll import it. I'll enter. I'm using IntelliJ just to make things easy for myself. Equals. Now, because it's a um, collection and it's an object, I need to instantiate a new one. So let's new array list. And then it's going to point out, oh, I see you want to um, instantiate a thing that takes generics and you've already defined what the generic is. So let's put that notation in. So now I've got a new array list. How do I know I've got a new, new array list? Well, let's have a look. If I look at the actual object, I can see now that there's methods on this. So we have bunch of methods. And at this point, if I don't even know what an array list does, I can use code completion there with that dot to see exactly what is going on. If I don't know what size does, I can then use um, the Java doc. So I can do control J on a Mac or control Q on Windows to see exactly what this does. So the size returns an integer, which is the number of elements in this list. Great. So let's because we're exploring it, I'm going to make an assumption that the initial size when I create it is zero. I'm assuming there's nothing in there. So let's run this test. So I've just started creating an array list. We've done code completion. We've seen what methods it has. I've made an assumption. Let's double check it. So it's going to compile this and then run that particular test. And the reason I use tests is because I'm doing everything in the IDE and I'm trying to learn. And I very often write tools and utilities initially as tests. And then I will refactor them down to a single method that is essentially the tool GUI. And then if I want to, I can refactor that and call it from a main method or call it from a GUI. And then I've got a tool, but I build everything up from tests and I initially start working from tests. So this test has passed. Now, if you're at the point where you don't necessarily trust your ability to do test driven design, you don't trust what these assertions are telling you, then what you can do is I'm going to put a breakpoint there. I'm going to debug this and then we'll see the object. So here we're breakpoint here. So we haven't done this line yet. And I can see down here in the variables that we've got a thing called strings, which is an array list, which has size zero. I can't expand it because there's nothing in there. So I'm using the debug to explore and I'm using assertions. Get in the habit of working like this and you can learn Java. You can explore the conditions that are in there. So let's just quickly keep going. So how do I add things into the array list? Well, let's do strings dot. Well, look, there's an add method. So I've got two ways of adding things here. What are the differences? If we're not sure, then control J or control Q will tell us. So add with an index and an element adds the element, the thing that I want to add into the collection at a specific position. If I just add it without it, it adds it to the end of the list, right? Let's just add it to the end of the list because we don't care. So I'm going to add a new string in there called test. Now I'm assuming that it's been added. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to assert the size. Now, if I was doing test driven development of the array list itself, I wouldn't be doing this. What I would probably do is I would have a test called when array list created, it has zero elements and can add to empty 
list, that kind of things. And these would be tests and build it out. And that way you get one assertion per test, which is what most people like. And then you've got the title of the test telling you what's happening. I'm not doing that because I'm just exploring and I'm learning what this does. Now, the benefit of doing this when you're learning Java is at the end of doing this work, you will have a set of examples that you can refer back to. You will have a set of examples that you can run anytime you get a new version of Java. So if you upgrade to Java 1.10, you go, has anything changed? Has it deprecated anything? You can run the test that you used to explore the functionality and then you will see. So we have figured out that we can add something now. I've added this into the list at this point. Hopefully, if we've been doing Java long enough, we know that we should really be coding to interfaces. And the interface that I've used at this point is not list, it's collection, because I haven't used anything that is list specific at this point. So really, I should be working with a collection. So let's bring in the collection, import that class. And you can see that nothing has to change because all I've used is the collection class because I'm adding things. What is the difference between a collection and a list? Well, a collection lets you add things, check that they're in there. Um, what else does it let us do? Let's do control space to find out. So a collection lets me add things. I can add another collection in there. Oh, look, remember we had an add at a specific index point. We can't do that in a collection because a collection is like a box. A collection is a box of stuff. We just throw the stuff in there. We can add things in. We can empty out the box. We can clear the box. We can check whether something is in the box. We can check whether it contains a certain thing. And we can check whether the box is empty. We can remove things from the box. We can iterate over it. We can check how many things are in the box. But that's about it. If it's a list, a list is more like a shelf where we put things on a shelf and we can see them. Then what happens is, let me import this. I'll do control space to see what this does. So with a list, we can remove things at specific points. So I can see all the things in the list and I can go, I want the thing at position three. Can't do that with a collection because it's just a box of stuff. We remove specific things. I can add things onto the end of the shelf. I can squeeze things in so it goes into the middle of the shelf. I can check whether it contains there. I can actually get specific things from particular parts. So I've added it in there. I can see it's at position four. I'll take out the thing at position four. Can't do that with a collection because a collection is just a box of stuff. That's the difference between the two interfaces. And we always want to code to interfaces. Why do we want to code to interfaces? Because here I've made a decision to use an array list. It doesn't need to be an array list. It could be what, what else implements list? Uh, it could be a vector. Now, typically when I'm coding, I'll mainly just stick with array list, hash set, hash map until I know that I need specific functionality. If I'm doing any parallel programming, then I might use... Um, what is it? Copy on write thing. I can't remember what it's called. There's a whole bunch of implementations. If we code to list, we don't really have to change our code. As a better example, let's say what I want to do is I'm going to, let's create a new test for this. At test public void can create, can, let's say can fill a list. I'm going to specifically use list at this point. So I'm going to create a list and we'll just use strings. List string strings, spelling, strings equals, and I'll start with an array list because that's simple. I'm going to say fill list with the strings and I want you to fill it with 40 things. Let's just do 40 things. So this is a method that doesn't exist. So I'm going to make it a private method. And as you can see, because we're using IntelliJ and we're using the automatic code writing facility, it knows pretty much what we want to do. We're say a void method because we haven't tried to capture a return value here. It knows it's a list of strings because we've defined that there and we're passing the argument in. And we've got um, an integer. We don't actually know what that integer is. So let's name that integer as how many. Then what I'm going to do is let's just create a for loop for in 
x, not the best of naming, but I don't care. x is less, let's start at zero. x is less than how many? x plus plus. Then let's add a string into that list. So I say strings dot add. Uh, I'll call it string. And just to make it unique, I will add on the index that we've got. So there we go, that should uh, fill in the list. Let's try that, let's see if that works. So how will I know that that works? Well, let's write an assertion to check. cert.assert equals, uh, I'm expecting 40 things in there, strings.size. So I'm using the methods that we've already covered to know about this. So hopefully this will have 40 things in it. There we go. So do we trust the test? I trust that test, but let's have a look just in case, because we haven't really got many assertions in there to help us really see what's going on. So I'm going to put a debug point at this point. So we've called the can fill a list. Here's the strings class, and we can see it's got all the string all the way down to string 39. So it's filled that in. I could have added some more assertions in there to check that. Let's add some more assertions. So I'm going to say, assert dot assert equals because we know that lists allow us to get things so I can say strings dot get at a particular point now remember we can't do that with collections so like we can do that with lists so I will get the thing at position zero and the thing that I'm expecting at position zero is string zero string zero So let's see if that test passes. Oops, I'm still in debug there, so that's why it's telling me that. So that ran, let's close this debug session. There we go. So that test ran, so that assertion has passed. Now I'm expecting 40 things that since they are zero indexed, the last one is gonna be 39. Get a thing at 39. So now I'm, have, I'm using assertions to convince myself that my code actually works. So this fill string takes a list. It doesn't take an array list. It doesn't care what the implementation is so long as it implements list. Now, the other way to learn Java, remember, is because Java essentially gives us a source code. If I can command click or control click on Windows, because I'm using the Mac here, command click into the array list, I see the code for array list and I can see that array list extends an abstract list. So it's bringing in some common code from there, but it implements the list interface, it implements a couple of other interfaces, but I'm not interested in those. Anything that implements the list interface can be passed in now to this fill list method. So if I make this a vector, the test should still pass because the test doesn't care whether we're using an array list or a vector or whatever other list implementations there are in Java, which is why we really want to code to interfaces because it gives us flexibility in our code. Because essentially each of these methods that we build up is an abstraction layer and we want it to be flexible, particularly when we're doing testing, we want as much flexibility in our um, test code as we can. Now, if I turn this into a collection, this is going to fail, right? Because we're using the get method. Now, what's interesting is this fill list is coded to use a list, but it's really only using a method from collection. This could just as easily be collection and it'll put it in there. This will pass. So this could be a vector. It's a collection. It could be an array list, but because this is now a collection interface, it could even be a set. So this could be hash set and this would still run so the more that we code to just the interface that we need the more flexibility we get in our coding but we're supposed to be exploring the list interface so list is not the same as a set remember because a list lets you add whatever you want a set only lets you add non-duplicate items so let's get this uh, wait and let's make this an array list but remember both a set and a list are part of the collection hierarchy so what else have we got here 
So we've seen size, we've seen get. What else can we do with lists? So if I do string dot, so I can clear them. So if, after I've cleared a list, what would I be expecting to happen? I would be expecting the size to be back down to zero. Let's check that that happens. That works. So if we're not clear on what clear does, even though it's relatively obvious from the name, if I do control J or control Q on Windows, I can see that it removes all the elements. The list will be empty after this call returns. When we're learning Java, using code completion, because it's statically typed, so we've got the benefit that we've got code completion coming through. When we have the code completion window up, anything that we're not clear about, we can use Javadoc, control J, control Q to see what the, the documentation is. And then if we just build up tests to explore it, then we get a better idea of how this works. Now, when people are learning Java or learning any programming language, they're very often confused as to how do we get practice? And they look for case studies or katas that they can work on. All of that is a good thing to do, but you can also do self-directed learning when it's a statically typed language and when you have an IDE that supports code completion, and particularly when you have an IDE that allows you to see the Java docs or whatever documentation you got, then you can do self-directed learning just by going through all these methods and seeing what they do, how they work, and periodically when new versions of your language come out, you can have a look and see um, whether there's any new methods being added or not. But this is a particularly good way say, of learning um, the language that we're doing. And this is what I encourage people to do. And that's what I mean when I say explore the classes to learn more. So I will put this into the Java Scratchpad project on GitHub. You can download that and have a look at it if you want. There's some other things in there. There's not a lot of comments because they tie back to certain videos, but you can carry on exploring the list class. And I'm going to rename this to can explore list because we always want to code to the minimum interface that we're using in our code. What I want to get across is how to explore Java classes and the basics of using an array list. If you've got any questions, add them in the comments. That'll be fine. And maybe we can do more videos than this. But any of your questions, what I encourage you to do if they are array list specific is write a test, use the Java docs, experiment, and then you will learn how to answer your own questions about array list and you will have self-directed learning and that will benefit you massively going forward, learning how to use programming languages and learning how to program. Because half the battle with programming is confidence, knowing where to find the answers, having the ability to experiment, making mistakes and recovering from them, creating small code in isolation that allows you to test things out, validate your assumptions and explore things in detail without having a big set of code around it. Get in the habit of doing this stuff, you will become a better programmer, guaranteed money back if you don't become a better programmer from this. Oh, what? It's free? Yes, doesn't matter. This is the right way to learn. Go learn.